Gentlemen. Feels good. What you call a stinger in the business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely cut that. <laughs> Pencil chips. <laughs> yeah. no, pencil pencils. Made with real wood. Made with real wood. Well, Aaron, go fuck yourself, uh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it is from behind the barcast, the podcast for bartending, service industry, drinking in general. I'm Paxton Eugene. That's Clint Moses, and we also have. Sunset Kelly on the one. You're so proud of yourself. There's two buttons with K's on them on this thing. And one's Karen and one's Kelly. If only somebody could change that. <laughs> Every time I come over here, I'm like, oh, too late. I'm already sitting in the seat. I can't do it. Welcome, guys. Hope your week was as eventful as ours because here in Savannah, Georgia, it was a slain Patrick's Day. Jesus Christ. Yes, Christ. <laughs> Uh, Saint Michael. Saint, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Saint here, 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 Julius. Here, here, go after yourself. Yes. <laughs> God, everything. <sighs> so we oh. will get into a little bit of uh, because uh, if you if you've listened to the show before, you know we do a Karen and a Darren every week, pretty much, or a couple Karens. Yeah. And this week would probably be pretty rife with them, but I, I mean, I've got one, but like it was so it was so busy, like there no was just two Karens. Many. So my mine came on Sunday, very eleventh hour, not no no St. Patrick's Day at all, and then. Pit stop, pit crew Kelly. He's got, he's got, got he one. witnessed his own. It didn't necessarily happen to him, but he's got the inside track. A little, on. little tease on that, but the second half there. Yeah, right? yeah. But uh, yeah, so this week was St. Patrick's Day, and, and last weekend was St. Patrick's Day on Tybee. On Tybee. So it's a, it's a, it's a physical battle <laughs> it <is> with <laughs> your body when you go. Home. So I, I worked the day of St. Patrick's Day. So at I a, didn't at a downtown at a restaurant where I sold more money than I've ever sold in a single shift without parties being involved, like thirty five hundred dollars in bananas. And somehow walked with like 16% tip average, which is wow. insane. Not good on, I mean, that's amazing. For, on for that Patrick's day, day. For people yes. have to deal with, especially like the last hour. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but like it was, a Thursday was bananas too. Just bananas. I worked Thursday day on Tybee. Which crazy. Has nothing, and it was absolutely crazy. I opened the outside bar. We're going to start this new system where on Thursdays, I open the outside bar during the day and take a couple tables as well. It's a really great system. It's like when you shave the garlic with a uh, with a razor blade, and it just melts in the pan with a little bit of oil. It's a really yeah, good we'll, system. We'll say Patrick's. Let me tell you what happens after you go out. Say Patrick's Day, because I yep. so I go out Friday. I work Friday. <laughs> I get off it. My buddy's like, "Come have a drink with me." I'm like, "I don't want to drink." So I told my buddy Terry before work. You did like, a double Friday. No, I did a single, but it, it felt like a double. Okay, gotcha. I walked double the steps I have on a double. Oh wow! You dodge people and anything. But so my buddy Terry texts me before I go to work. Hey man. I'm coming downtown. Let's get up later. I was like, I don't want to do a thing when I get off. I got family in town tomorrow. I want to see them. It's been top of my cousin, Kevin, and his, and his beautiful wife, Kari. Kari. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm like, I'm not doing this. Very so generous to meet too. him for one drink because he walked from the wormhole to Church Hills. If you don't live here, that's three miles. Okay. Yeah. But like on St. Patrick's Day, you'll have an adventure along the way of that walk. Yeah. yeah. No matter what. And then he's like, he's, he's had a few. And he gets butt hurt that I don't want to go hang out with him. And I'm like, I told you. Pre-work, I wouldn't. I agreed to come have one drink with you because I actually probably needed to have a drink before I got in my car. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, you just made me come all the way down here. I'm like, first off, no one made you walk that far. Two, I told you before I wasn't going to. Yeah. When what's what, man? You, you already ever see me. I'm like, I see my cousin less than I see you, and I'm going to be alert tomorrow. But also, I've had a day. I'm going to go home and have a few drinks at home. So, sorry. And I went home and had more drinks than I should have had. But get up Saturday. Come to Tybee. That was the plan. And they're, they're a little slow because they had fun on Friday. We actually talked on the phone for two hours Friday, Friday night with all of them at Charlotte's house and me at home. Okay. Which is fun to do when there's three people that have been drinking all day and you're just getting there. I walked in the house though, bottle of vodka to the head. Yeah. I just picked it up by the cabinet. It was just like, oh, you gotta. Before I like laid down to play with my dog for a minute because I was like, He's, he doesn't deserve it the way I feel right now. Because <laughs> the drink I got downtown didn't do anything. I don't want to osmos my bad mojo yeah, onto my, yeah. my sweet so, doggy. But so as you do, I, I go out Saturday. Okay, I went out Saturday for Fantasy. Oh, Patrick. as you did. Me. And I went out. And I had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We'll get the chips in a minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish you people could see. Look, cause I, I, I'm used, I'm rarely the the messed up guy at the bar at any hour. But granted, like before midnight, you probably seen me shammered. Yeah. A 
a handful of times, especially in the last decade. Now, you know, you're in your 20s or whatever, okay. but I'm a 40, 41 year old man. You're the, the, here's what you are. All right. So, you know how um, everyone, every group has got like the fat girl so that everyone looks more attractive. You know what I mean? You're the guy that doesn't get as drunk as everyone else. So, you seem like in a better, I'm, yeah. You know, you know. Wait, I'm so hyper. I kind of, <laughs> I don't stumble much because I, I talk through my drunk. And so I don't appear as drunk as other people do because I'm, I'm talking cl- faster. But I'll hear myself and be like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you're the equivalent of surrounding yourself with fat, fat guys <laughs> that no girls are going to. Like, I mean, I, mean, I went home at like twelve thirty. It was early. It was very early, and your exit that you made was like, it wasn't the uh, southern sayonara as we call it. The Irish goodbye is where you just leave. The southern sayonara is saying goodbye a hundred times, like, oh, I didn't see you before I left. Goodbye. <laughs> Clint was like, uh, what's the tab? We got to go. Because, <laughs> like, I looked, I, looked, I, I had a moment of clarity. Because I quit drinking for like an hour and a half the because I realized I was too wasted when something happened that we'll talk about later. Um, I was like, I got to quit drinking for a little while. So, like, as you sober up, sober up quote, unquote, yeah. as I get a little more, a little less drunk, I'm like, man, everybody's wasted. My crew is near the front of the front of the pack here. <laughs> because, you know, when you drink until 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, and you get up, and we got, they got to my house, and I was like, look, I'm not even pretending. Let's go. Let's drink. Made drinks in the car. And we're in the cab on the way to Tybee, and the, and the Uber driver is just laughing. And I'm like, look, sir, I want you to know, we literally, this is our first drink. And he was like, Oof. I was like, I know it's going to be a day. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we went to Raw Ingredients to put down a good base. Yeah. Shout out to Miles, hooked it up. Just amazing. And they're like, this sushi's fire. I'm like, yeah. It's the, it's the best sushi in the county. That sushi's in is shutting down. I mean, for real, somehow on Tybee, we got lucky enough to have the best sushi. Yeah. Like, it, and it, it's a sizable roll. They have a great variety. And they don't gouge you on sauce. If you want five different sauces, yeah. you're getting five different sauces. Wasabi cream. Oh, and those rolls are so, uh, how do you say, girthy? Mm. Yes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And well, so, so, we, so get the base down. <laughs> and we went to, to, to Seawolf for one minute with that unpleasant guy bartends. And we're talking poop. I don't know. <laughs> if you've ever been there, there's a guy. He's a good bartender, but he has his resting dick face, and also he's just kind of unpleasant sometimes. I wouldn't know anything about that. Dude. I would. Uh, or maybe he doesn't like me. I get it. That's would, cool. Yeah. I, 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 that's, a lot of people don't like, like me. me. Yeah. But wait, we were, we were there for one drink, and I was like, "Look, I'm getting a little tipsy. Let's just go ahead and go. <laughs> Let's go ruin Paxton's." No, <laughs> just kidding. So I, the, I probably spent less time behind the bar than I have in a long time. Yeah, too. you absolutely did because other people were trying to spend the same amount of time behind the bar. Well, see, and I, I'll get drunk and be like, if I'm not doing it, you're not doing it. Get out of here. Get out yeah. of here. Well, so uh, real quick, just before we gloss over, um, friends asking you to meet after you're done with a shift, especially like a St. Patrick's Day shift, they don't understand that your entire night has been socializing except... With people you don't want to talk to. No, no. I mean, even if they were people you wanted to... Even if you loved every I single... Did, I, I had one table. I was like, you guys have little... It was like, they came in at 9.45. And I was like, oh, I hope you're my last table. Because they were cool. I was like, can I get those IDs? Then all five in one person's hand. <laughs> Not all five of you even got drinks. But they're like, just to be safe. And I'm like, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Like, thank you. I fucking love you guys. And then I was like, do you guys order? Like, nope. We'll yeah. Give us five minutes. We'll have it all together. Yeah. Then one guy gave me the whole order. Boom, boom, boom. And I was just like... Can I sit with you? Are they in tech or in the service industry? Like, uh, you got to wonder what they do. They were probably, they were in their mid, like late 20s. Okay. And they uh, definitely, at least three of them have been in the service industry before. Gotcha. Yeah, so uh, just understand, when your friends are working at a busy bar shift, especially on like a St. Patrick's Day, please don't get butt hurt if they don't want to go out right afterwards. Or I mean, it, I, I mean, I come home and I literally sit in the dark and yeah. meditate. I swear to God. I, I literally, before I called my, my sister and Kevin and them, tell them all the crazy shit happened in my job that night. I got in the shower and took the coldest <laughs> shower and just scrubbed everything off and cried a little bit just to get like you get a dopamine yeah. rush from using a cold shower. It's actually yeah. good for you. It's really healthy. You should try it. But also, I just like needed to like yeah. I needed to be clean because like, I was yeah. dirty. Like I was sweaty. And I dirty mean, it's people's and, like, mouths and, on like, you. I, you know, I rolled my sleeves up, and so when I get home, the first thing before I even touch my dog is I wash my arms. Because I've had plates and food splashing all over me. You got like trucker arm, you know, when they hang their left arm yeah. out of the truck for so long. It's all tan and the other one's a different I, color. I, look, I, when I sh- you roll your sleeve up, I strip it's down in the garage like I, work at a, like, like I work at a hospital, dude. I don't want none of that coming in my house. <laughs> you go to the triage. Every, everything that happened there needs to stay outside. <laughs> like, I, like the other job, it wasn't as high impact as this one is. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't get that. I wouldn't feel grody when I left there and like. Like I, I got, I, I've never driven the, my, the Beamer to work the new job because I don't want to get in the Beamer. Oh like, yeah. Like I would, I would put on like a plastic suit, like uh, like Mark Wahlberg at the like end of the, the at the Work end of the department. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, just to like not 
So, so my anyways. buddy, so my buddy Clint comes in on Saturday night, and I'm working the outside bar, and it's it's okay. Yeah, it was steady. It was steady. I made, a, you know, I ended up making a decent amount of money, but no one, everyone that I interacted with that was like college aged or you know in that area, they're like, this bar is so cool. It was so much fun here. Like people were understand, you know. So then I had these two guys sitting in right in the middle, and they had been there right about since I got there. And I'm, you know, I don't know a lot about uh, sci-fi movie films, but there's a gentleman sitting there, and apparently he looked like uh, Pedro Pascal, who plays the Mandalorian in the... Uh, and just played Joel in The Last of Us, so he is like one of the hottest actors in Hollywood right now. Well, Clint said, you look like Pedro Pascal, and the guy was like, okay. And he was like, and a friend was like, I don't think so. So I'm like, oh, you don't think so? Here's 20 pictures. And he was like, he kind of does. And I'm like... But so I'm. One, Clint I'm, went on a full lobby to make everyone at the bar understand. Pedro Pascal. Well, you can blame the person that gave me weed because that's what was happening when Clint gets really high on sativa, and I was like, ah. So I, I would sit at the door and just giggle <laughs> and look at the guy. I was like, uh, that's why I'm wearing today my uh, my I'm a, a, a baby uh, shirt on. friend and patron Joe, uh, hockey Joe. He came in last night. and He goes. So the Mandalorian, huh? That's all he had to say. <laughs> <I'll> say. <laughs> yeah. and, and these guys were, they were super cool, but I could, I was like, Clint, all right, Clint, I couldn't tell you anything because you were kind of a whirling dervish. Normally you would have been behind the bar the most but, of the time. But my cousin was there, so I mean, yeah. his wife, so I want to hang with him. Uh, I, was, I was like, Clint. I think, I think we've reached was, our man, was, Manda I, limit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is, <laughs> I had Manda loaded up on talking to him about, about this. Um, so because sat- at one point I, think I was like, all right, this has been enough. <laughs> you, you, you were able to be software. How many car bombs? All right, remember, I made three car bombs this Saturday before. How many do you think I made? 30. Seven. 37? Seven. That's it? <laughs> For Double. one person. One guy. Was it, was, it, was it Pedro Pascal? No, it was not Pedro Pascal. <laughs> was it Rob Kisipel? No, so, <laughs> so, no, no, Rob. Rob, uh, Rob. Rob went out Friday. Rob didn't come out Saturday. Yeah. So as Rob did on Saturday, what I did yesterday and what we did last Sunday which was when you're hungover, you, you like to eat certain things. I, so shockingly, mine is fun. Uh, fun. <laughs> and so, but yesterday, I was like, you know what? Last weekend, I had Chinese food and pho. Oh, wow. Well. Not a good idea to just, all, you can't go all Asian. A tour of Asia. Yeah, yeah. And my <laughs> stomach took a tour of <laughs> ass Asia. And it was not good the next day yeah. at all. Yeah. And so this weekend, I'm like, you know what? I'll get an Italian battalion but long from Baldino's early in the day. And then I had pho delivered, not at the last time, you can like set the time yeah. up on Grubhub, but like the second to last time, because in case they have a problem, I can still get my yeah. pho. The pho gets dropped off. I'm like halfway through the sandwich. Okay, for, for the non-locals, Baldino's, as I like to call them. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a chain. It's a chain, but it's a Savannah chain. No, they're from Jersey. There's one in Augusta. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. And they yeah. look Greek, they're which Jersey is also stuff. good. Yeah. Uh, it's the only real, like the closest thing to like an actual Italian deli style submarine sandwich. Yeah. The lettuce is shredded. The oil and vinegar is oil and vinegar. And if you get the Italian battalion or the American army, it's double meat. So the American army is turkey, ham, and roast it's beef. It's soft white Italian loaf, non-toasted, which but, there's certain things I prefer toasted bread on, but not an Italian sub. I will toast the bread. I'll, I'll retoast the sandwich later on to get like <laughs> the flavor out of it. I'll add cheese to it. I oh, go all oh, if you're trying to. To trying some, to church it up, yeah, a, little up a little bit after the first go round, but uh, it's like if you drop it, it thumps. Okay, so it's a half and a hole. The half is the size of a foot long anywhere else. Yeah, the hole. It's I mean it is a girthy sandwich. Yeah. You have to kind of turn it when you bite it. It's a it's a lot. <laughs> it's amazing. Though. And, and, and it, as you know, Italian meat's low salt. <laughs> listen, <laughs> Pho, and, low salt. And listen, this is a life hack for every damn body. If you're going to put vegetable toppings onto your uh, sandwiches, yeah, shred your like like um sub sandwiches you know whatever shred your goddamn lettuce cut your tomatoes as thin as you goddamn can so they're not these fat things sliding around your pickles i do not want to i don't want a whole spear in there i baldino's shaves it spear link that's what i'm sure and it's the best i'm it's the telling best. you you got to make your vegetables smaller so yeah, i don't get tomatoes but I, so I have like just orders I've done before to so like repeat last order. And this was one I think when Richard was there because it had tomatoes and pickled jalapenos on it. But the first half of that sub I ate, I wasn't even looking at it. I was just <laughs> slamming it into mayonnaise and shoving it in my mouth. I don't, I, don't, I, get, I, I don't get oil and vinegar or mayonnaise on it because I want it uh, or mustard. I, I would put it myself. Oh, see, because you get every goddamn thing delivered, don't you? Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I, I'll get it because I go there and pick it up. I'll go it pick up. it up sometimes with the way and, it work. 
I'll ask him to cut it into fourths so I can go ahead and get a fourth of it gone before I get home while it's driving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I eat while I'm driving. Yeah, I, I, so if I'm going to eat a sub while I'm driving, no shredded lettuce. It's messy. I don't care. Big, Big Mac and driving, same thing. So, <laughs> I don't care. Shredded lettuce. I don't care. So yeah, stomach, not doing, uh, not doing great. So yeah, so we've all had our, our gastrointestinal problems here lately. But uh, is, uh, Kelly as well. I mean, we've all we've all been through it. You know, some from, you know, self-sustained injury. <laughs> some from, you know, stress. I know, and or, I was like, I, all I said to myself last night when I, uh, my stomach started really hurting, I was like, yeah. oh, thank God you don't do anything next weekend. So last Sunday, you had your Baldino sub, and I discovered our new sponsor of the uh, podcast. So, <laughs> so last week, I, I wake up, and this is what happens whenever you, all right, I drink, and I smoke cigarettes when I drink. When I drink a lot, I smoke a lot of cigarettes a lot, right? I uh, yes, inundate my palate with garbage all night. So when you wake up the next day, you want liquid and you want salt. I discovered Wrap Snacks, Lil Baby. Uh, it's called the All In Flavor. Now, essentially, if you're from Canada, you would call this dressed all over. All right. Here in the US, what they do is whatever kind of chips the company makes, they take all those flavors and throw them onto one thing. So it's salt and vinegar first. All right. When your palate has nothing left, when it's the fourth quarter and your taste buds, can't receive anything you eat one of them goddamn wrap snacks right there our newest sponsor i'm pretty down look so it's salt vinegar barbecue onion garlic, come around here and, and get some kelly and more yes i'm I telling mean, you what they dump they dump the whole spice rack onto these things oh wow all right so all right, per, per bag <laughs> right. i haven't looked so yet why are you doing this to me that's delightful all this right. is two weeks in a row that i've ingested an entire bag of those before i even got my first cup of water down <laughs> And, and not, no, it's not really. And not kettle chip either. Just all right, so, not kettle. All right, so just throw out a guess how much sodium is in this. One. No. Oh, oh, Rats snack. Um, <laughs> per serving or per bag. Per bag. Uh, I'll go. Uh, Twelve hundred millis. One point two grams. One percent of the daily value. Uh, probably fifty-five. Forty-two. Hundred eight hundred seventy milligrams. See, fat. you already knock half of it up before you. Thirty-three percent of your daily value of fat. It's 20 percent of your saturated fat, uh, but I'm just trying to get my macros, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no cholesterol though. <laughs> so when your palate is tore, they're actually delicious. I'm telling you, yeah, when yeah, your they, palate is tore ass up, holler at little baby <laughs> and all in, all in wrap snack. <laughs> Made by uh, by uh, Master P, Master aka P. Uh, Percy per Miller. Percy Miller. And uh, there is a bazillion flavors. It's all over my hands now. I, don't know what to do. <laughs> I did not think about this. I should have brought a napkin up here. Come get I, some more, Kelly. I see you eyeballing, baby. You got yeah. to get so, it. Uh, oh, you know what it is. It's, so there's Little Baby, Honey Cheddar. It's out. Everyone's got like a fun one. Cardi B, Honey Drip, Butter Popcorn. <laughs> this, the, this, that Little Baby. Migos, Barba Q-in, Q-U-I-N, with my honey, with a dab <laughs> of ranch. A dab. Uh, if dab, you know what I'm I saying. You know what I'm saying. They they all have pretty fun names. Though. I wonder. Well, also, I don't smoke weed, obviously, but like, if you smoke like forty blunts, you probably can't taste a lot of anything unless it's a very L strong Lil flavor. Louisiana heat. Okay. Mm. I, I, it's, okay. It's, oh, that one. We got we got a uh, little baby's cheddar sour cream here, and then we have. Uh, they don't really pay us enough to do this, but we're just we're just Master being advocates. Is wee wavy Master P Honey Barbecue. He has put some weight on. <laughs> maybe it's the chips. I, maybe it's the wrap snacks, buddy. Yeah, maybe but uh, great. I lost what, some weight. What would Lil Bub Bites wrap snack be? <laughs> <laughs> it would be uh, crickets and cream. <laughs> <Or> cream. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, crickets are good, aren't they? Don't, don't they like roast them or fry them up or something? Yeah, I don't know. I was, I was thinking like buffalo or something. I don't yeah. know. So uh, I lost a little bit of weight. Uh, I got. I went to. Uh, I don't have my normal barber. So I had to go to Great Clips, and I walk into Great Clips. I know now. Normally, I love them, but this was like an older black lady, and we had the best time together. But we had such a good time, I quit paying attention to how short she was going. So now I look like a bean sprout or like Butters from South Park. You got a lot of Butters, and I'm not wearing a hat yeah. purposely for that reason. Oh, yeah, you got a lot of Butters. So I was oh. going to Great Clips. There was a chick there, Cut Benny's here, who did a damn good job. And it's twenty five dollars, but like I said, it's eighteen bucks, so it's yeah, seven dollar yeah. tip. This girl Reek was cutting my hair downtown. She was a barber, a, at a an aviate barber, like an aviation theme barber, because the guy that owned it was in the Air Force or whatever. Okay. And she was apprenticing then. She did a good job, 
But it was every time I would go, I would have to wait like an hour past my appointment time. And like, that's aggravating. Because, because she was booked up? She was she, she would get loaded up because somebody else called in or there was a problem. She was behind. An appointment's an appointment. Uh, I, look, I'll give you 20 minutes or so. Doctor's yeah. office, you get a little bit more leeway. Yeah. Cutting hair, though. So Rob goes to the same barber, and she moved to a new barber. It's called Gold Tribe. And it's uh, an African-owned barber shop. And it's, it was just me. And what's black folks in there? I was like, this is going to be a good haircut. Beard. Cause she's got, and she's, her skills have definitely stepped up some. Like she did a great job on the beard, everything. And it was. It well, was, the, the lady that cut mine, I didn't have to ask her to do certain things that you would have to ask a white woman to do. Like fade the beard in. Yeah. Yeah. For, because you know, you don't want out to here with the sl- And then my neck, my ears, all that shit. She was just like, bam, 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 right on it. She goes, you going downtown this weekend? I was like. She goes, I know that's right, y'all. I ain't going down there. You know? Like, we had the best time shitting on downtown Savannah St. Patrick's Day. But, but then you get your hair, you're like, Ugh. yeah, Yeah, and then, but we kept chatting and chatting, and I was like. There's a point of no return, too. You're like, well, this is my haircut now. Hey, you know, it's just like a good flavor of potato chip. You can add, but you can never subtract. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they added it and added and added. I, I, mean, I, I want to know what the more is. It doesn't really say what the more I'm is. I'm telling you, what they just dumped the whole spice rack in there. All right, so I bet some of it's the honey barbecue, some of it's the cheddar cheese, some of it's the Cardi B barbecue, just, some of it's the ranch. Some of, it's, you just, know? it's just a little bit of dust at the bottom. I'm t- that's that's exactly it in there. what it is. Um, so, yeah, this segment's been brought to you by Rap Snacks. Uh, <laughs> Rap Snacks, good for your hangover, yeah. apparently, but might have been better than what I did last night. Uh, delicious. Let's want to shout out our new Patreon, Cameron Collins. Cam? I don't know. I, you know Cameron? Yeah. Nice guy. Thank you. Thank you for the follow. We appreciate it. Um, and which are all of our Patreons. We, yeah, we, we, we had all a of our Patreon Patreons. last weekend. Oh, yeah. I mean, so Kelly uh, had a little bit of a, you know, gastro problem, as we all have. <sighs> so he had to go. So we did the Patreon by ourselves. We sat here for goddamn 45 minutes in the dark, kind of staring each other in the yeah. eyes. Just so doing- you know, we don't, there's no cameras. So it takes about 10 minutes to be like, not look at the camera. I'm looking back at back. And I'm like, it was kind of nice. We're talking to each other. I mean, we were literally just staring at each other. It happened. And uh, it just kept going yeah. and going and no, going. No, I would never begrudge you. Actually, Kelly was the first guy that made me feel okay about, all right. The first time I ever really met Kelly, we were coming back from a festival that we had attended, but not together. We were in a satellite periphery of each Adjacent. other. Yeah. And I needed a ride home to go to work, and he was borrowing Marissa's car or yes. someone. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I can just hop in with you. Kelly seems like a cool dude. And we were talking about uh, gastro problems whenever you're on the road, because we're on the road, and it's like, how do you feel about shit? You know, because we had just left a festival where you're pooping in Porta Johns or wherever. Or the woods. Pizza boxes. <laughs> and, uh, and we kind of, and my stomach's kind of like, you know, I'm not telling Kelly this yet because we're not that close yet. So then uh, as we became friends, I was like, Kelly, man, I was I was prairie dogging like the whole time and I was afraid. You, like, you, you, there's a point where you're like, I'm close enough to home where I can make it. That's what, yeah. But then you hit traffic and you're like, no! <laughs> so this is every Thursday that I've worked during the daytime because my, my, my gastrointestinal cycle <laughs> typically starts around noon. You know what I mean? So when I, gotta, when I have to be at work at 10, I get up at like 8.30. I run up and down the stairs a few times. I drink a pot of coffee. It doesn't. It doesn't get my. Did it, it always work? It doesn't always work. About one o'clock at work when we are as busy as we can possibly be. I, I went. Out, I forgot who I told. It was a girl though. I was like, I'm prairie dogging so hard right now. She goes. Somehow I know exactly what that means. <laughs> So, so you go, I mean, look, if you, that's the thing. You're, I couldn't you're, leave. We you're were hot too, and sweaty. I couldn't leave. We were too busy. And you live right down the street, but you just, just can't. I couldn't leave. So you got to go in there and sweat it out. I sweated out for about eight seconds. And that was the, the, that eight seconds that it took was long enough for four of the first attractive blonde haired females to show up and be waiting outside <laughs> the, the door. door. And you're like, <laughs> that toilet's broken. Go to the other one. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> all right. I always put the seat back up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? and, you, and you go and you speed poop. That way you're like, it was yeah, like yeah, I don't know. You're like, God, that guy before me you tore it up. You put the seat back up. Like, I don't know who did that. Especially like if they weren't in line when you got in exactly. line. Exactly. So they don't know. They don't know the, the history. <laughs> the thing is, when you walk in there and it wasn't you, you're like, ah. I've walked in there and it wasn't me. And the person that walked out didn't make any suggestion whether it was them or not. And I seem to think that it wasn't still. I don't need, so I'm wondering if my tactic of being like, oh, who the, it might be the wrong tactic because I've seen people walk out and I walk in, it's like, good God. 
<laughs> yeah, you're like, are you okay? Yes. <laughs> so you're cut off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's happening to your body, your bowels, but you've had too many rap snacks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsored by rap snacks. Uh, please check us out. Uh, go online to rap So we're going to uh, uh, take a break and go eat some rap snacks. Yeah, I'm definitely actually, gonna... My stomach, well, I had the rap snacks, feels a little bit better. I'm telling you, man. They're the cure all Maybe there's Pepto Bismol in there, too. And then um, uh, next segment, we're going to get into all of. Oh, we got to talk about Conor McGregor, too. Uh, yeah. I mean, we just have to mention them, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the second half to all the St. Patrick's Day shenanigans. Ever wanted to start a podcast? Don't have the equipment or the know-how? Well, we've got you covered. From Behind the Barcast is expanding into the commercial studio space. You see, step one is making sure you sound great, because no matter how good your content may be, people don't want to listen to something that sounds like this. From Behind the Barcast and Paxton Eugene Productions now offer in-studio audio and video production. Or the studio can come to you. We offer mobile podcast production from wherever you are. Now, with the hard part out of the way, there's no excuse for you not to get started. So if you're in the Savannah area, shoot us an email at frombehindthebarcast at gmail.com for details and a quote. Again, that's from behind the barcast at gmail.com and let's get your voice heard. And welcome back to From Behind the Barcast, St. Patrick's Day Aftermath Edition. Also, we're feeling the aftermath of the rap snacks. I have a sodium sweat. I was wearing a hoodie. I feel better. <laughs> I was wearing a hoodie the first segment and woo, uh, I blew up just like um, our boy Conor McGregor did apparently. So here, I saw a picture on the internet and is our buddy uh, Sean Williams. Uh, I, I got no shortage of pictures of Conor McGregor on stage. Oh, well, I just like look, I opened up Instagram for the first time in a month, and uh, there it was. And I was like, so I saw Sean yesterday at work. I was like, was that really Conor McGregor or just a fat guy? Not a fat guy, but a big guy that looks like him. He's like, no, that's him. He was in the parade promoting Proper 12. I think they're doing like a stout beer now or something like that. Okay. Let us let us know in the email if we're wrong or just about any. Tell us you hate us, whatever. Um. <laughs> So I saw the picture of him, and I was like, he's like Patty Pimblett. Like, if he's fighting, he's a buck sixty, whatever his weight is. If he's not fighting, he's like 40 pounds bigger. He must have been eating a lot of wrap snacks. <laughs> but, uh, and then um, uh, something else I forgot to mention in the first segment, which, is, which has become a trend, and we've kind of figured this out. So uh, a couple times this week, I went to go Oh, by. I think he's coming back to fight at you in an upcoming UFC thing with Michael Chandler, so that's a weight class up at least. I went to go get a bottle of Finlandia from the XYZ Liquor Store, which supports the podcast by letting us use Patreon money to buy liquor to, to, and so, you know, buy proxy in some sort of way. And this Asian lady works there. And the first time I went in, I said, hey, could I get, here's the bottle of Finlandia, I'd like a box of Parliament Lights. I get home. I don't look in the bag. I get home. It's a pack of yellow American spirits. Whoa. Clint goes in a week later. A week later, I go in there. Same order. Same lady. Same lady. A little Asian lady. And I watch her. I'm staring at her. The American spirit yellows are next to Parliament Lights. And I, when I go to Parliament Lights, I say the blue and white pack. I say Parliament Lights, blue and white pack. I say a box of Parliament Lights. And the closest anyone's ever gone to mistaking that is Mar Marlboro. Oh, I get Paul Mall sometimes because I talk gotcha. kind of fast. Weird. Weird. Um, but so I watch her and she grabs the American Spirits and I went, no, ma'am, Parliament Lights. They're blue and white. They're right next to that. She pulls up the blue American Spirits. And I'm like, these are English cigarettes, ma'am. Parliament. Parliament. If now she does, I don't know. So I'm like, I'm wondering if there's this rash of people asking for parliaments and getting yellow American spirits all over the city of Savannah. Yeah. That, or it's just this lady. Um, now, uh, most people have corned beef and cabbage for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had wrap snacks. Yeah. <laughs> or you take what? a piece of uncured so ham. I took a piece of. I, I, it's not going to play, is it? <laughs> yeah. So, what Clint did was I had, I brought I bought some uncured ham because I got a, a salad to eat later that I'm gonna make a chef salad, but I wanted to add extra ham to the chef salad that was the what like, a Publix one or whatever. So I'm just gonna think a pack of ham. Yeah, they skimp on the meat when you buy a prepackaged salad. Yeah, 100%. and I just didn't want to deal with anything cooking later. And so I, I was like, I'll buy this pack of ham. And we're down there eating those wrap snack. I went, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm gonna put take this ham and put the white cheddar wrap or the cheddar ones into the ham and ate like a ham taco. I do about two or three of those. Kelly has one. It's great. I go, 
if I packed was opening the fridge to grab something, and I went, oh, that mayonnaise I left here, which is mysteriously almost gone. I've been crushing that's that That's why shit. you don't want mayonnaise to be using it. And so I was like, what am I doing? I got to add mayonnaise to this, get this thing. So I put a reasonable size amount of mayonnaise, <laughs> a spoonful almost, yeah. on the piece of ham, cover it in chips. I go, this is either going to be amazing or good. <laughs> There's no, it's, 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 it's a seven or above, I know for sure. And w- I mean, I take the bite, and it had even, I haven't even crunched it yet. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> but it's like I had to eat it over the sink. Yeah. Uh, tell them about uh, your corned beef experience. So the, I don't know if you want to talk about it. So yeah. the crux of my stomach thing is I was going to do a smoked corned beef uh, in the pellet smoke, which takes like six hours to smoke a corned beef. You throw it in an instant pot, it still takes an hour and a half. Also, we got to tell the pellet story about me coming over the other night. I don't want to forget about it. Um, and so <laughs> we I talked about that last week. We um, did? Yeah. Okay. Because I used the fire in the pictures. We talked about it. Um, so what you do when you buy a corned beef, corned beef uh, brisket is what I do is I soak it in water. For 12 hours to 12 to 18 hours to get all the salt, to get a lot of the salt. You buy the pre brined. Everyone buys the, almost the exact same corned beef. It's like this one brand. It's everyone had it. It's got like a white like a, label. A white label. And a clear green back. On it. Yeah, a clear back on it. And it's got all the stuff in there. Yeah, it's got the seasoning packet and the corned beef sitting in, a, you know, in, a, in salt water. Yeah. And so you, you at least want to rinse it very, very well and kind of squeeze it out some. But if you soak it, it gets a lot of the salt out so you can re season it with whatever you want to or the packet it comes with. So I put it in the fridge on Thursday, thinking, you know what, tomorrow morning, Friday morning, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up early, put it in the smoker, and, and we'll smoke it. But then I realized, if I take this to work, we don't have time to eat this. And I'd have to slice it before work, which is going to dry out. So I'm like, I'll just, you know what, I'll get up Saturday morning before my family comes over and deal with it then. S- spoiler alert, I did not. We know what you did Saturday. What I did Sunday, yesterday, after the... An Italian sandwich of salt, of salt love and pho. It's like eleven thirty. I'm like high as balls, watching my third Denzel Washington movie, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna. T- it's still in the water. I'm gonna take this out of the water and dry it out, and I'm gonna season it. and I'm gonna cook it tomorrow. But I'm gonna I'm hungry, so I'm gonna lop off a few corners of this thing. You know, a couple slices, and I and I'm like, I I don't I don't even think to look up how to do this. I just do it. Like I said, you usually cook like five hours usually, or in a, in a pressure cooker. So I just throw it in the pan with some with some beef tallow. I had seasoned it with like some of my steak seasoning, probably way too much. And so I I like I'll cook it ten to twelve minutes instead of like four minutes like I would do for a steak. And I sear it, and I'm like, well, this is it's folding up some. I'm like this is perfect. So I eat the small piece, and the other ones cook more. And I eat all of it. And about an hour goes by, and I'm like, oh, that was a good idea. So it's kind of because brisket you cook or you or corned beef briskets whatever. The reason you're cooking it so long is to soften it up because it's a it's a it's a it's a, a heavy lot of meat. intramuscular tendendry. In yes, <laughs> yes, something like that. Yeah. and so and like you know, of course I'm high, so I'm I'm also rubbing it in mustard and mayonnaise. And so you're trying to sear this thing like a steak. Yes, it is not a steak. <laughs> it is not how this works. I woke up and was like, corned beef brisket. <laughs> uh, was it super tough when you ate it? I don't really remember. <laughs> It was so so. The mayonnaise strange. and mustard kind of softened the blow. Yeah, a bit. it didn't soften the blow to my bidet though. <laughs> blow day <laughs> today. Blow day <laughs> today was a day. I was very happy. I had a bidet though. Oh, nice. So you were pretty high when you did when you did this. I was real real high, hung over. So I'm like smoking like wax and keef, and I'm, I'm just <laughs> I'm trying to drown my yesterday. Yeah, yeah. But you know, as as it, as it happened, we went home. We did not stop drinking. We got back to my house yeah. shockingly. Yeah. So I didn't feel real good yesterday, and like it's. You know, the older you get, sometimes you have a two-day hangover. Yeah. And uh, I yeah. have a two-day hangover. And what, what, what people don't realize is, so I tried to get out of work yesterday because Saturday night was so hard. I'd be way more hungover. I drank last night because I was at work, obviously. But I would be way more hungover today if I hadn't gone to work yesterday and I would have eaten all day like I typically would have. Oh, yeah. Because the second day hangover all day eating extravaganza creates more of a hangover for me. Yeah, because the thing is, we're not eating... Like, I don't eat a lot of bread. And so I eat an entire yeah, sandwich oh, yeah. and then a whole pile of rice noodles. My body's like, hey, so. Like, bro, um, we don't need that. You're, you already hit your macros, buddy. Yeah, With yeah, the wraps on snacks. the first quarter of that sandwich, probably. Yeah. But, so, uh, uh, but, yeah. You, but so then you start, and a lot of people do this like at the beginning of the year after New Year's. Like, they'll do a dry January. You start abstaining from certain things. I, I, I've I often considered doing this. I've done like a couple of weeks before. Yeah. Like, I've, yeah. Okay. I'm going to drink in January. Football. So not in January. I'm just talking for like a week. <laughs> no, I'm not talking much. like I've gone 27 days uh, completely drug and alcohol free before. 
Oh, yeah, and it wasn't for any medical reason. Were you in jail? No. <laughs> Well, there, yeah, we're back, the, the, my most recent 27 days was self-proposed, 20, not, 27 days later. Non, non-health issues, whatever. <laughs> and I broke it walking into North Beach Grill, and this is like, this probably been like six or seven years ago, and it was taking so goddamn long for the food. Shocking. That place, good God. I was like, give me a fucking beer. <laughs> and, and, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't even drink for the rest of the night, but uh, typically people will start abstaining from certain things. So... Um, Bill Burr does it once a week every month. He doesn't he drink does the first like 10 days. The first 10 days, he doesn't drink coffee or smoke cigars or he does, he hadn't drank in a long time. But when people say they're abstaining from things, I'm always like, what about weed? Because in the spectrum of things to abstain from, I think cigarettes, cigars, coffee, hard shit. Yeah. That's an abstinence weed. Even though I don't smoke it. I don't think that's a contributing factor to. Yeah, people that quit smoking. My, my, my buddy Brian does this. He's a, he's a, a pothead of the highest order. But once a year, he does a month where he doesn't smoke weed. Is that just to regain his? Uh... Yep, just drop to drop that tolerance back down. Sure, that's because he'll get to a point where he's smoking a blunt or two, an, an hour, and he's like, I'm not that high. Because like I would, I, I would, like, I, I'm a pretty casual smoker. I don't smoke a ton of weed. Yeah, like I'm not, I'm, I'm not Martin. Um, <laughs> Dude, I, you got you, you stole it out of my mouth. Yeah, we were all three. Yeah. Yeah. We were all three. Things. Also, a hundred of our listeners were like Martin, Martin, because <laughs> Martin would just smoke and smoke and smoke, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm so high on blunt number two, where I've only hit it like eight times. He's like, what you talking about, N word? He says nincompoop, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he gets the N pass. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know who doesn't get the N pass? Oh, though? good God, no, they don't. <laughs> Oh shit! Hey. Hey. Of the week, you want to go first? Karen no. of the week. Oh shit! Oh shit! It's everyone's either favorite or worst favorite time of the podcast or the year. It is the Karen of the week, and first off, we have. This uh, bitch pillow sleeping my table. <laughs> 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 this goddamn Karen. Okay, <laughs> this is Thursday, five years, whatever. This is Thursday, okay? okay? I don't give a shit right now. Time. This is. Time is just a concept this, on this St. Patrick's Day. March 16th on St. Patrick's Day, okay? <laughs> and people are drunk as they, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a whole week of thing. This woman is in her late 50s, but the way she talked about me, I'm going to say late 60s because you're a bitch. <laughs> um, and you look so, much older. <laughs> so again, it's slammed. I'm, I'm doing my best to take care of everybody the same, but they're, her and her husband are hammered. They're way too drunk for their age, and the sun's not even down yet. <laughs> like, for the, You're too old to be that drunk. I mean, and they're, they're trying to like, because everyone's waiting like 45 minutes for a table because we're so busy, and they're like, hey, and I was like, hey, you guys have, everyone's had 45 minutes, so everyone else has sat down, is ready to order, because they've been looking at the menu outside. They know what's going down. Sure. Most people. Karen, not that bright. No. Weird. Weird. So... Would you want anything to drink? I love a, a, a Riesling. I was like, <laughs> and we we offered a six ounce or a nine ounce pour. I chose six for her. She wasn't going to get the option. You did, of yeah, nine. you didn't give her the option. No. And so her husband is a is a larger man. He had on suspenders and a belt because, well, he goes to the bathroom at one point and comes back with just one suspender still on. <laughs> like he didn't even give a shit about the other one. And I'm like, and he wasn't gone that long. Like, did he take his suspenders off the? Does pee? he pee out of his hip? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he was, maybe he was so drunk he sat down. That's what I'm thinking. He was so drunk he sat down. Yeah. He comes back with the spinners just kind of flinging behind him, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. guy. so they sit back down, and I, every time I check on my, you know, seven minutes or so because they're eat, they, once they get their food, and they're just they're taking their time with their food. She's not really eating much, and I'm like, oh, she's one of people. She's drunk because she's because she's not. But normally, eating. when people are drunk like that, they're ravenous when they yeah. eat. You know, they're like, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> like she got their, one of the things people like there is a certain soup. <laughs> about doctors. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's good. It's one of the best things on the menu. You okay with that? It's okay. I'm gonna keep it. It's like slide to the side. Half an hour after she got it, she's over there still hitting it. I'm like, you eat cold soup. You eat soup quickly. You don't eat cold soup. Yeah. Um, and then their entrees, she's barely kind of touching it. Some while ago, there at one point, and Karen has her head down on the table, on her arm, like I was just sitting. Yeah. And she's like, like, you know, we passed out in a desk in school. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, all right, let me, ma'am, are you okay? Do you are you guys ready for the check? Nothing, ma'am. And he he's not helping me. He's he, not trying to. He's just looking out the window. I'm like, I kind of touched her. I'm like, ma'am. She's like, what? I was like, 
uh, y'all, y'all ready for the chick, right? She's like, no, we're fine. We're still eating. And I was like, well, you can't, can't sleep in here. Like, unless you're... <laughs> All right, so I don't know if uh, and people outside of the industry know this, but it is illegal for you to sleep inside of a to, place to, that serves alcohol. To be, to, and to be passed out. Yeah. And, I mean, if, you, if you're three, you can sleep in there. Or, right. or younger. <laughs> if somebody helped you wipe your ass in the last six months <laughs> you can and you can't drink legally, you can, you can pass out in there. But what if they're invalid? No, no I said so, yeah. legal, legal drinking age. So, I... I, I'm, I'm, she was so obstinate with me. I'm, I'm going to leave her alone. So five minutes goes by, and she yells at the food runner, come here. I want my check. We haven't seen our server in half an hour. Yes. You haven't seen me in half an hour? If you don't work in the restaurant, so check this out. All the tables are in the same area. You can't not see me. I'm I, the guy in black running around the room. Yeah. And, and I, I just talked to you five minutes ago. We need our check right now, and she's pissed. So I'm like, all right. So I, get, I, I mean, I, I want them gone. You want them gone. So I run back over there, little handheld thing, and he, he try, we, we have a handheld machine at this restaurant I work at called Toast, which is amazing because you can type in orders on it. And when someone tips you, you hold it. It says 22, 20, 18, or custom tip or no tip. I don't let it go on people that it suck. I want, I want them to, I want them want to tip me, with the, hit me while they look me in the eye. Yeah. Because <laughs> usually someone just writes it down, you're, all, you're gone, and you get, they, they don't, they, it's harder to shit on somebody while you look at them. It's like the Joker said, you know, I like using a knife. You can just shoot anybody from anywhere to, yeah. to really kill someone with a knife. Well, and you like, it's, look it's like you know, if, it, you argue less with somebody in person than you would on the internet because you're looking at them. Yes. So you're, it, it, you, humanity is involved here. And so he's trying to take it from my hand. Like, and like, one, he's drunk. I don't want him to take it at all. Like, I didn't let anybody take it on Friday. Like, look, the no. machine? Uh, people, they're they're $5,000. They're an expensive machine. And though. we just now have enough for everyone to have one, finally. So I'm holding on to this thing. And he's trying to take it. I was like, sir. I got to hold on to it. If it breaks. It's, 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 it's on me. It's $5,000. You He's can like, lie and be like, I would have to pay for it. So he, custom tip, zero, enter. There's already a no tip button. And I'm like, cool. And just walked away. I didn't say, thanks. You want a receipt? I just yeah. walked, I go, cool. And walked off. I probably should be a little more polite, but screw you. Like, you were paying the ass. No. But, well, te- technically, I guess I should be more. Yeah. Okay. According to the, to the people that my managers might think I According should According to the bylaws of the uh, corporation. So, <laughs> so they get up and she is like, Huffing and puffing. I'm like, oh, she's going to complain. So I kind of follow a, lo- a, a loose tail, if you will, as the police say. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do a loose tail, and she goes to the bar, and he's like, come on, baby. And she's like, no, no, they got to know about this. And she's like, excuse me. Snap in. The bartender's like, oh, and I was like, oh, shit. So I'm, I kind of creep behind the bottle so she can't see me, and she can, I can just hear her. And she's like, I want to talk to the manager. Our server was rude. So rude. And he's. And so the man, they get the man, the bartender's like, he freaks out and goes, I got to find Victoria. I'm like, I'll get her. It's my table. I know what's going on. I'm, I can give her his. He goes, I got to find her right now. I'm like, dude, I'm going to find her because I'm going to tell her what's happening. Because she needs to know what's happening before she goes to the customer so she can make an informed decision on how to react to her. Yeah. So the manager sees her before she sees me. I'm like, hey, hey, come here. So I'm like hiding behind the wall. I'm like, look, she was passed out at the table. So like, I, I, I was a little short with him because she needed to leave because you can't sleep in here. And they tipped me zero. And they tipped me zero dollars. And I hear her go, did he just tell you he didn't tip, I didn't tip, didn't tip anything? You know why I didn't? Because he was rude. He was hard to deal with. I never saw him. And he was just ugly to look at. <laughs> Dude. I'm ugly. <laughs> I have never been called ugly. But I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not a dime. Yeah. But also, you know what I did on Thursday? I got my goddamn hair cut and my beard tightened up. So I know of all the days this month, I was the best I've looked. Even if I was an ugly fuck, I present... You know, my like my my clothes are ironed. Yeah, you know I, what I mean. I'm clean. <laughs> I'm, I'm well shaven, I, and I just got tightened up. I don't smell bad. Cut. My yeah. hair is cut, and my teeth are brushed. I'm yeah. I'm <laughs> ugly to look at, but that's what you had. That's what that was. That was your ammo, Karen. You're ugly to look at. Well, that's funny because uh, uh, an off base uh, uh, bodily comment will come up in Kelly's. Uh, Kelly's Karen of the week, but you're you're gonna go last because because you you're because you haven't had one yet. This is gonna be a special you, you, edition. You, you, ha- you have a you have wrap snacks in your beard. In my stop. beard? Yeah, right yes. there. I can't stop looking yes, at it. Yes, I love it. So I touched my eye. We were talking about Conor McGregor. I was like, ah! Like, I, was, I was I thought you were trying to tell me not to do something with your eye wing. Like, no, stop, stop. I, I didn't know you were having. I'm not that subtle, bro. Just stop. <laughs> so um, um, so yeah. Screw you, Karen. Now, yeah, Friday, man, there, was some, there, there was some Karens, there was some Darrens, there was... It's just a barrage on, uh, on St. Patrick's Day. It's a brouhaha. Uh, brouhaha. Well, guess what? It, that was the exact opposite for me this last weekend. My Karen came in 11th hour last night, on, on late, not late, 
but on a Sunday evening. So all weekend, I've got my, my preparedness panties on to be, you know, angry. What, what depends? <laughs> 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 Thursday day I might, I might have to start The thing is If you use it to pin And you yeah. shit in it You gotta walk around it the rest of the day Just be sloshing around Your I, butt cheeks I haven't experienced it yet But So um, I've, I'm ready I'm like I dare you I dare you Don't tip me Try I dare, me. dare you. you know, you know? <laughs> So Everything goes really well Everyone's really generous uh, Sunday comes around I was like Everyone kind of probably Blew their load Over the weekend You know <sighs> But there was a lot of people there, but it was a very relaxed time. It was totally fine. I'm having a really great day because when I got to work, it was still nice and cool. I wasn't super hungover from the night before. I slept. It was great. I got to work. I was like, let's let's fuck this day in the ass today. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I'm like I'm like let's fucking go, man. You know, like I turned around a little bit. I was like I'm back in the flow. You know, like let's let's be cool. Let's be positive. I got my buddy. Mike Lynch sitting right there, Patreon Patri- subscriber. I got Rob. You know, I got like a good first offensive line. Uh, Ro- Rob K? <laughs> no, not Rob K. A first offensive line of good people. You know, Tim with his Bud Lights, he tips $2 on each one. I'm like, let's go. About two, three hours into it, so they were watching basketball. A group of two guys and two, two men, two women come up. And I was like, what's that? I mean, I'm, I'm full on. I'm like, you're, you're rubbing your nipples at this point. Yeah, I'm like, what's shaking, guys? How we doing? Never been here before? How was your St. Patrick's Day? This and that. Holy shit. You were um, feeling it. So they were like, uh, could I have, could you make me like a Lynchburg lemonade? I was like, I got to go inside and check to see if we have lemonade because we ran out of Bud Light, Ultra. Like, we have a wall of Guinness. I'm, not, I'm sorry, a wall of Jameson that we didn't sell out. <laughs> yeah. But we ran out of really random shit, like Coors Light. I mean, things you would typically run out of, Miller Lite, people were just, we expected people to drink more Jameson. And Guinness. And Guinness and shit. We ran out of four bags of ginger ale mix. People were drinking G- Jameson, Jameson and ginger. ginger. ginger that, so I much. sold a lot of those too. Yeah. So we're out of a lot of stuff and I was like, well, let me just go check inside to make sure that we do have lemonade and I'll be happy to make one for you. So they go, all right, well, we're going to get- those some- people that don't know, what's in a Lynchburg lemonade? Uh, oh, I put Jack. I asked, I was like, Do you want Jack and lemonade? And he was like, Yeah, Jack's fine. And that's it. Right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just, so, I, I just didn't know what, you know, Jack is. is cause I made sure Lynchburg. that we were in the. But he could have gone, I'll have an Irish Lynchburg lemonade. You know, yeah, I don't know. yeah, I just, I wanted to make sure we were in the same <laughs> ballpark. I figured it would be whiskey, you know, some yeah, sort whiskey of. And lemonade. So I go inside. Oh, I see that we have some lemonade. So I come out. They're like, We, uh, uh, Tito's and lemonade, Lynchburg lemonade. And then two other drinks. It was like Captain Coke. Big lemonade family here. Okay. Yeah. So, and they all seemed pretty pleasant. So then they said, we're going to get four pizzas. I was like, okay, you want them to go? They're like, yeah, we're just going to have this drink, wait on the pizzas, get them to go. So write the ticket in. Somehow it's not that busy. I go put the, I was like, hey, I'm going to go put your order in and give you an estimate on the time. I always do that when we're kind of, just so people will have an idea how long they're going to wait. And I always oversell. I'm like, it's going to be 40 minutes when I think it's going to be 30 minutes. So I take the tickets back. I walk out. I go. So they're sitting at the out, outer section on the round. And uh, I hadn't cleaned it up since the last group had been there. So I walked over there. I was like, God, y'all are so messy already. You know, ha, ha, ha. And three of them laughed. Oh. I want to guess three. who didn't laugh. <laughs> yeah, Karen didn't laugh. But not because the joke wasn't funny. She goes, um, what did you put in this? I said, what, Tito's and lemonade? She goes, yeah. She goes, well, I was like, why? Does it, what does it taste like? She goes, it tastes like water. So I went, I went, <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. And, and, and if you've never been to Huckapoo's, <laughs> look, you're not, you're not getting any, you're not, there, no one's complaining about the strength of the cocktails. Thank you. Yeah. So I was like. <laughs> yes, actually, people do complain. This is too, too, too strong. strong. Yeah, exactly. So I went. I'll order half drinks. Like, oh, man. I got, a ra- I got a raging semi when she said that. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> I, I, I killed this Karen with this Tito's. And I was like, lemonade. <laughs> Bring it back to her. No more complaints. All of a sudden, all the dudes are coming over. And they're like, they're trying to be out of earshot of her. They're like, hey, brother, sorry. <laughs> right. Their pizzas come out in a very timely manner. Everyone has finished their drink except her because she can barely. I mean, she yeah. can barely put it down. This is her drink for the day now. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I was like, you, you, you think I don't pour strong? I will. 
I will fuck you up. <laughs> so she didn't finish any of her drink. The dude, uh, so 4 p.m., their tap was like 110 or something like that. And the dude was like, threw me 150, but he was, he was boxing out Karen. So she couldn't pay so, or see? No, so that she couldn't see that he was taking care of me because she took offense that I took offense to the drink pour. Which is ridiculous. Which is entirely ridiculous. And then I was like, maybe the lemonade was weak, right? You could do a little shot. So I went, I went inside and I poured it. This lemonade was like the sweet tea in the South. There was no- was like chick lemonade? It was like wrap snacks. There was no <laughs> lack of flavor. Because wrap snacks do not like flavor. They, they, they do not they, like Pringles flavor. Pringles needs to buy some, not Pringles, uh, Lay's needs to buy some wrap snacks. Yeah, right. And try, and like, oh, like this is what sour cream and onions should taste like. So in a St. Patrick's Day exclusive, and now this didn't, ha <laughs> and this didn't happen to Kelly, but Kelly just told us, now I'd been, uh, uh, I love Saturday night at about two, you took me, you were driving the cab. Yeah. You took me home probably like 2.30, 2? Yeah. Okay. When I left, Miss Stephanie was inside. All the flaps were closed. There was, there was one dude in there, and she was having a pleasant conversation with said gentleman. And you're like, wow, this night really did go well. I was like, wow, look at everything. I'm going home, you know, no problems. I will, uh, Kelly drives me home, and then when he returns to Huckapoo's. All right, so this is how I understand it. She was fine up to a point and then realized her squad was nowhere to be found. Karen. Karen. Yeah, Karen. Yeah. yeah. Come, come, come to and, us on that camera. The and um, she, um, and sorry. And um, so I guess Stephanie said they might be in the bathroom. And then that's, I guess everything went haywire after that. She took, I guess, took a swing at Stephanie, boxed Rachel in the ear, like punched her in the ear, not slapped, punched her in the ear. Joe T grabs her into a bear hug. Gets, Joe T is our bar back. Yeah. Gets her out to the steps. Joe T's a, a stout fella. Stout yeah. fella. Had her wrapped up. I mean, nothing, you know, wasn't trying to hurt her or anything like that, but just trying to control her a little bit. He was containing? Yes. Contain, contain, yes. yes. Controlling and contained. Did she yeah. say anything to him? <laughs> no. Uh, um, she enjoyed his embrace. <laughs> yeah. Are you hugging me? Yes, Are you exactly. hugging me? Yes. We just tipple, Grandin. <laughs> so I turned around to talk to Stephanie for a second about how long you think you're going to be, blah, blah, blah. And the band's still loading out. They've got their trailer at the bottom of the steps. And then I hear a crash, and that's her knocking their gear over. So Ooh. the whole whirling dervish starts all over again. And it's just a few guys in the band, I think maybe the girl that's in the band too, they're all just swinging. It's like one of those dirt balls you see in a cartoon and just arms. It's like feet. pig pen. And pig yeah. pen, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm picking up two dudes to take them up to Gumbo's. And as I'm leaving. Which is like a five minute ride. Yeah. yeah. As, I'm, as I'm leaving, Jyoti and uh, Rachel are sitting on top of this girl in the mud waiting for the cops to show up. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> You weren't in town. It rained. Yeah. It rained it, it rained Friday night into Saturday. Yeah, that, that parking lot looked like a bunch of kids dumped their matchbox cars out and were getting ready to play with them. That, that was a mess of a parking lot. But in the time it took me to go to Gumbo's and come back, couldn't have been seven, eight minutes. The cops had already been there, cuffed this girl, and she was out of there. But Joe T said she was like a, a, like a cat trying to be shoved into a box as she was getting like shoved. Just, oh, she was starfishing? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, well, here's right the right best part. Here, yeah. It, here's the best part. Joe T, he's a stout fella. He's on top of her. Rachel, who, uh, no one will get this reference, but uh, she's, a, she's a bean pole. You know, she's olive oil. She's, she, she's tall and thin. Yeah. She's tall and thin. The girl on the ground is going, get off me, fat bitch. <laughs> <laughs> of, all the, of all the things, it's like calling me ugly. Come on. <laughs> yeah, she took such offense to that. Too. She's like, what? Well, all right. So he, well, when you're confused, I was like, ugly. Well, yeah, luckily, she's like, fat? luckily, so Joe T, I think she means you. Luckily, one of the cops that came to handle the situation used to work at Sandbar down here on Tybee. Yeah. And he has a relationship with Joe because Joe T bartends at Sandbar sometimes. So when they showed up, wasn't it? Oh, he said, um, uh, they said, uh, uh, here, here's the lady who's causing the problem. Just go talk to her. Yeah. They're like, all right, we'll figure it out. She speed ran her arrest. <laughs> they yeah. said like two words out of her mouth. And they're like, oh, yep, yep, you're under arrest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bless her heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's very Pitt Crew <laughs> Kelly of you. That's very Southern. I want to do, give uh, Martin a shout out. Okay. Martin posted this picture eight years ago on St. Patrick's Day. And it's, you have to see it because you don't get on Facebook and you don't have Facebook, but it's a picture. You've seen it before and you have probably seen it before. 
it's it's a parking lot on the south end of Tybee, right next to the like the tie dye shirt sun, stuff. Yeah, and Sunrise. It's yeah. a it's a gravel parking <laughs> lot. Full, it's basically Huckapoo's parking lot, like it's gravel. Lot, but like it's not. It's got more gravel. <laughs> it's it's less traffic. It's more gravelish, and so it is a couple. This man has his pants around his ankles. He's got his shirt on, and he is inside of this woman. Yes, in the parking lot, and they're asleep. They're a missionary, old school. His head is over her shoulder, and they are both passed out, screwing, or having had screwed. Yeah. I don't even know if it ever got in there. Yeah. In the parking lot. There's cars near them. Someone almost ran them over. That's Martin, what- I think, is in the cab, pulling into the parking lot, and was like, er, picture. <laughs> and I don't know if you know this, but Martin doesn't um, take her easy in the cab, as, no, uh, no. as it were. They but they're, they're in the middle. Oh, the it wasn't like a car moved, and then they were there. No. They were in the middle. They were like... Oh, we'll just camp here. And here's the thing. Uh, that parking lot over there, it's not dark. No. Because there's a hotel right next to it. Yeah, there's it's a bar well right lit. There's yes. like a dark area in the back. They weren't in the dark area in the back. No, they were in this uh, as center. I wonder if they were like leaned up against the car doing it or trying to, and they just fell over and were like, this is <laughs> And it. the car pulled away. And then they <laughs> and they're like, we just live here. <laughs> Speaking of cars pulling away, Vinny, our old producer, used to be on the ones and twos, um, he worked, he manages Social Club. It's one of the biggest, it's probably the busiest bar in Savannah. And so they don't drink there. Like, the, no staff drinking. Like, they, they, once they close, they might like, you know, or not like that, they'll have like a bottle of champagne for the staff to split or something. A little like thanks, but during shift, not drinking. So everybody's leaving there sober enough to drive home. So he goes to his car. It is 4.45 in the morning. And when I wake up Sunday, I get a, I, I get, or Saturday, I get a Snapchat from Vinny that I've gotten. Look, and there's a guy curled up under the front right, uh, front left bumper of his car. <laughs> like, curled up, pants also around his ankles. I don't think he was having sex with anybody. I think those are pee pants. <laughs> I think that, I mean, his, under, like his, his, his pants, like the belt's b- below his knee, underwear above his knee. Like, he was trying to get him back together. But, like, here's the thing. He had to fall into, this, it's like a scion, the car. So it's, there's not a lot of space underneath this, this, this bumper. And he's, like, wedged in there. And so but he's like, hey, man, you got to get up. And he's like poking him and backing away, you know, because you don't want to wake somebody. You know yeah. what you're gonna do. And this and it, this guy gets up and he's got all the tr- leaves and trash and stuff. <laughs> it's like sweet, sweet paper just blew it into him. And he's like, he's like, hey man, are you okay? And then the video cuts off. I think the video was like, damn, it, I'm genuinely concerned because he's wanted to. He's like knew if he backed away, like he was gonna hurt this guy some because he was that uh, under uh, his car. Uh, do you think he got cold? So he was at the ships of the sea museum where Vinny parks. So it's kind of dark back there. Oh, that yeah, I parked back there too, and and it was raining. So maybe you trying to get out of the car. Oh, he might have been uh, uh, shelter from the rain because I had to. Uh, I tell this story. Yeah, I'll tell the story. Okay. So I work with a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Shock. So th- these three girls were we're going to ride home together with this one girl's boyfriend. Boyfriend gets obliterated, drunk on St. Patrick's Day. Great. Shocking. This girl's twenty. He's twenty three. Ha ha ha! You learned. So the other three girls, the girlfriend, and the other two girls. Can't drive a stick, which is what his car is. So they have no way to get home. And they live, you're not from here, they live in Wheaton by Bolton. I don't know. Oh, 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 Wheaton. Okay. They, they live by Linda's Seafood Shack. This is not a place to be walking to. Yeah. With for three little girls that don't match the neighborhood. And they're like, we're just going to walk home. They called me. They're like, hey, can you drive out? Someone's like, look, I'm, I'm at Churchill, see my buddy. I'll be out here in like 15 minutes. I can give you all a ride then. Just hang tight. It's like, you can't get an Uber. They're like, look, we're, we're trying. They had, Uber had zones on St. Patrick's Day. They wanted you to be in each zone to wherever you were going. Like, you'd be in the red zone if you're going this way. Green zone, this way. That way. The cars mm. knew where they were going when they came to the zone. Yeah, because imagine being a fucking Uber driver. Yeah. Um, and so they're like, oh, it's fine. I'm on the corner of streets. Yeah. And, I mean, you've got an <laughs> idea where they are, but like, you know, yeah. Yeah, they're still not going to get They're not going to be They're going to put the, the pin down and pin then down. run. <laughs> they're yeah. they're going to Irish goodbye. That's probably yeah. supposed to be it. They're, they're going like, to get in an Uber, Uber UFO somehow yeah. and be in a And so they're like, we're going to walk home. It's about a two mile walk. I got you. It's about a two mile walk, easy, maybe a longer. And I, I'm like, look, I, you know, give you 50, like, well, we're just going to walk. I'm like, just keep trying to get an Uber, all three of you at once. Keep trying to get one. So I happened, I'm sitting there at, at, at the bar stool, and I lean back, look down two seats. There's the manager I love the most that I work with. And I'm like, I've been sitting here for like 10, 15 minutes alone waiting on Terry. And there's my homeboy. And I'm like, yo! We start talking. He's like, what's up? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, my buddy Terry's meeting me, but I'm also going to go pick them up in 15 minutes and take them home because they don't need to be walking home. And one girl's like, it's cool. I got pepper spray. I'm like, <laughs> so? Yeah. If someone's hammered drunk and wants to take you, pepper spray ain't doing nothing. Yeah, think about like those, they shoot uh, 
uh, pepper bullets at PCP guys, and they're like, what's this? They try and taste they, people. They eat like, them like rap snacks. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, so I, I, the, ma the manager and I are texting them both. They're like, we're, we're just going to walk. I'm like, you can't be walking. And so I walk out. I was like, no, I'm going to go get them. I'm going to go because Harry's mad. I wouldn't hang out with him. So I'm like, I'm just going to go get them. I walk outside. It starts drizzling. And then it starts raining. And I'm like, these three girls have worked all day. They are soaking wet now. Yep. And they're trying to walk to the hood. And I'm like, thank God I'm going to pick. So I call them. I'm like, look, I'm going to pick you up. Uh, I'm in my Honda. So don't judge me on this piece of shit car I'm in. Um, and so but it's not like you could have fit all three into your little BMW. I said that in the car. I was like, look, you would, well, one of them was, two of them are pretty short. They, it would have worked, but like, it wouldn't have been fun for the two in the back. Yeah. And so I'm talking to them on the way. I'm like, look, I'm in a gray Honda. I'm parked here. Where are you? We're on the corner of East Broad and Liberty. I was like, get away from there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the projects. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're going from bad to worse. Like just, I was like, just cross the street. Like, what's well, fine over here. We're by a street. Like, I'm like, look. I need you girls to just walk. There's a lot of people. I out. said, just walk west. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, if you tell a 20, there's a 20 year old, a 25 year old, a 27 year old. They're not, and they're not, none of them are from here. Clint Moses King, if you tell me to walk west, I won't. Savannah know. is set on a grid. The streets run north and south and east and west. They said Savannah know very this, well. Okay. Passion. Don't give them shit. Islands are east. The south side is, you yeah, fucking guessed it, south. The north side is the river. And west is, you're right, west, east broad, west broad. Anyways. I'm like, just walk away from the projects, please. Walk a few blocks, find a shelter, and I'll come get you. And I'm like, but I'm in my shitty car. Don't judge me. And she's like, do you have two cars? I'm like, yeah, I have a BMW. She's like, what kind? I'm like, 20. And I tell her about it. She's like, you're, you said you're my dad's age. I'm like, I mean, I don't know how old your dad is, but I assume you're 20. I'm 41. She goes, well, you want to adopt me? I'm like, I don't know if goddamn kids grown or not. Are you kidding me? She looks, she works hard. She's cool as shit, but like, no. I'm going to pick you up right now. And I'm like, so I get him. I pick him up. That I'm was like, a fatherly thing to do. You know? Yeah, well, look, I take care of my people I love and I work yeah, of with. course. And so, like, and like, I, I like all three of them a lot. They're all very sweet girls in different ways, and like, they're all nice. And they work hard, and they're I work not... hard. And I and I don't want them. I don't want anybody I know, even that I half care about, to pick yeah. up in the rain. I can think of a few girls that we both know that I would have been like, it's time "Oh like, this shit, I'm sorry, I'm already home, now, and my were, tires flat." If I knew they had just gotten off work and were sober, like, okay, yeah. these, these are females. <laughs> we pick them up sober, but you know, when they're drunk, you have to be too crazy to pick them up. Um, so I get in the car. I, I thank God I have like three towels in the car. So like, here you go. Like, dry off some. I'm sorry. So where's your boyfriend? And adoption papers, right? Yeah. And the glove. I box. go, where's your boyfriend? She goes, well, that's why we were over there on East Broad Liberty. He ran into the projects. And I was like, well. Was he running to or from something? To, 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 away from them. Because he was mad. He was mad they were mad, I guess. He's 23 and drunk. You know, you do dumb shit when you're 23 and drunk. Or 41 and drunk. Who knows? Yeah, he wasn't looking for crack cocaine or anything like no, that. No, no, I don't think, he, I, I don't think they, they do like any of that. Um, <laughs> well, you just got to know. I mean, I don't know directions. Well, there, he's not from here. Oh, God. And, uh, and I have a hood pass anyways in most places. Yeah. I, I can be in the projects. Yeah. I, but, but you don't want to be in there running. Don't run through the projects. You, you only run if you have to run. You don't come in running. Running while white in the projects <laughs> and, is just like driving and, while black in a nice neighborhood. It's 1230. <laughs> like you're getting profiled. Now, it's St. Patrick's Day. Like you said, people are everywhere. Yeah. So I'm driving them back to the, to, to the one Running while house. white. I said, hey, are you going to. What are you going to do? She goes, I'm about to go find my boyfriend. I'm like, uh, well, lock your door. She goes, well, again, I have pepper spray. I'm like, again, keep your doors locked. Don't talk to anybody. Don't ask if they've seen him. You can drive around and try and find him. But and she, I guess she wouldn't found him. I text her like an hour later. I was like, did you find him? She's like, yeah. I was like, oh, well, awesome. Where was he? Where we were standing and waiting. He guess he just ran in there and then they, they started walking away. He just came back and was like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Speaking of that, I have got one little story I got to tell. Okay. On yeah. St. Patrick's Day, here's the thing that happens a lot. People walk out on tabs, right? It happens more on drunk holidays than it does any other time of year. Fourth of July, St. Patrick's Day, it used to be Thursday out here. People would walk out on tabs. People out here were doing it on purpose. You know, orange crush times, you know, that's, that's, that's a bad thing. It happens a lot. And so this guy, though, sits down and goes, I'll have a long last tea. And I was like, Phew. I mean, of all the drinks to order. You're saying at your work? At my work. And okay. his girlfriend is like, I'm, I'm, I got to sell her on this one drink that I'm not going to mention because <laughs> someone figured out where I worked by me mentioning this drink before because we saw it on the sign outside of the place. Dang. Michelle, good detective work. Oh, wow. um, Very nice. And so I, I'm, I'm like, should I take her ID? I don't want to give either one of them a drink. And it's like five. <laughs> and, it, okay. and especially not a fucking Long Island ice tea. Ice tea. Now, we don't make, you know, a Huckapoo's Long Island iced tea. <laughs> yeah. But. I check his ID. I check I mean, ID, ID everybody this, this this holiday, and I look at his ID and I'm like, oh, thank the Lord, sir, your ID is expired. I cannot give you a drink. 
What do you mean you can't? I was like, sir, you can't. Brilliant. You can't. If the cop, if they're not coming in. If, if they came in, the ABC people came in there and started checking people's IDs, yeah. and this guy's ID is expired, I get a $500 fine. Restaurant gets a G, and I'm getting fired for sure. And you get probation warning for two years. Happens again one more time in two years, you can never serve alcohol in the state of Georgia again. Wow. So... I mean, I don't. It's not super enforced, but like you it's just downtown on, uh, on y- yeah where cobblestones are yeah oh, that's it. yeah you don't want to uh, yeah I yeah. get that and yeah. you were looking for any out anyways I'm yeah. not he, but he goes well can I still eat and I was like sir you can definitely eat <laughs> I'll buy your he, I'll buy your he, appetizer he goes, he goes what kind of shrimp stuff do you have Mike we have these two things he goes but what kind of them Mike there's, there's two ways of shrimp prepared we have he's like give me this one and I want it now and I was like. <laughs> Sir, I've never put an order in so fast in my life. And then, like, 10 minutes go by. It comes out fast as hell because it's fried. I'm like, here you go. And he's like, and he's eating the shrimp, tails and all. I'm not He's putting his fingers in the cocktail sauce and, like, scooping it in the mouth like I do with mayonnaise. He doesn't care. And I'm just like, more sauce, sir? Like, I didn't need this guy to eat just, like, for his yeah. own life. And he's like, that was good. One more of those. <laughs> and another entree. So they ate between them, mostly him, yeah. three entrees. She barely touched her drink. And I was thinking he was just going to start grabbing her drink. Shrimp cocktail. Keep them coming. Like yeah. he's ordering shots. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but my man. So I, I bring. So we, again, we use that little toast system to work. Yeah. I bring him a paper. I bring everybody a paper check. I hand him the check. I'm doing, t- you know, 30 other things. I go in back and come out. And he's gone. With 20 bucks on the table. He thought. I, 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 also, my dumb ass ran outside and went. What am I doing? Right. <laughs> There's a thousand people out here right now. Yeah, yeah. I can't see. I, I, I just do. He had, she had on green. He had on white with green on it. I'm like, I went outside. Oh, yeah. I looked around for about. Where, where is Waldo? 45 seconds and went. Well, this is over. Uh, it was like a seventy dollar tab. Oh. So, he, but he had thrown down twenty. He thinks he paid with the credit card, uh, and that was his credit card receipt. Uh, and so he was tipping me and leaving. I, yeah. I don't because you don't leave twenty. Yeah. And walk out. You just. He was just so hammered. Yeah. So I looked outside. I looked, I, looked, I looked people sitting down. Oh, so it was a printed receipt? Yes. Is what you're saying? Yeah. So he could have. I mean, we. who knows whether it was malicious or not. I mean, look, not, I've but. had more than 50 people. I've handed them the printed receipt. And they were like, do you have a pen? I'm like, oh, I need your credit card first. Because they're drunk. That's a weird system. Though. So it's, like, it's Circa, uh-huh. where I used to work, which just lost their shift. Surprisingly, um, I would have, you know, older gentlemen who've had a couple bottles of wine and a couple of martinis. They're, right, that's a, right, and right. It's in a book. And they're like, can I have a pen to sign this? And they just, they just don't remember they haven't given me their card yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I'm just literally handing someone a piece of paper. There's yeah. no book or anything. It's just, yeah. here you go. Gotcha, yeah. And I think he was just like, I've paid. Here's right. a tip. Yeah, no. I, I, look, I, shout out to this job. I didn't have to pay for it. And, the man, I, and I, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I went to the manager. Like I went to, to one manager who sucks. He didn't do anything. Went to another manager. And she was like, I'm doing this. Can you tell this other guy? So I didn't tell him, the guy that I ran to the bar who I love. Yeah. He's like, it's fine. We'll take care of it. So I didn't touch anything on the table. I let the money sit in there, everything. I didn't know what the, what the process was. And everyone's in a bad mood. And I'm yeah. trying to cheer him up. I go, you don't want to do like forensic analysis on this glass to see where he went? And he kind of smiles. I'm like, I needed you to smile. I need you yeah. to smile. I was, like, he's, I was like, what do I do with the money? He goes, it's your money. He tipped you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, what word? Okay. As, I'm as far as I know, they only walk out of the day of the whole place. Really? The, oh, that's, that's pretty that, great. Because the bartender, once it got dark, yeah. credit card, drink. <clears throat> Not Drink than credit yeah. card. Credit card drink. So uh, Alex, uh, he worked at uh, McDonough's, and people would try and open their tabs. He was like, "Listen, man, I know you think you want to open it. I'm just gonna run your credit card." Yeah. And they were at McDonough's downtown, and they had just had a system where he said he had a girl running the computer. He would order, take the drink orders, tell her what they got. She would run the tab, hand it to him. Because downtown McDonough's is like, McDonough's is the busiest bar in St. Patrick's Day. <clears throat> Gotta 100%. be right. Yeah. They're, they're in social. Yeah. They, it, McDonough's is the probably the most. Wanted to go into bar on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, it seems sort of like a mecca for like the people that visit Savannah. Like, oh, we well, have to go in there for a drink. They, 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 that's where the, the there's there's a there's marching herds of bagpipe players in Savannah. If you've never been here for St. Patrick's Day, it's and they go into bars. They walk into bars and just start playing. Churchill's, like any kind of it, European bar. You hear the bagpipes trying to tune up. <laughs> well, the thing is, these guys have been doing this for a few days. They get here on like Wednesday, but McDonald's is like they're okay. Right, let me. Uh, I got sent a video of a, a courtyard, and there's a fife and drum and fucking bagpipe thing in there, right? So uh, these guys, all right. If you're gonna have a snare drum player, 
and all you're doing is a buzz roll. Yeah. Learn how to goddamn do that one thing. If you're going to be the snare drumist. <laughs> Every video I saw, it was like, <laughs> you know, the bagpipes are the bagpipes. And it's this guy going, <laughs> you got to play snare more than once a year. If you want to play once Here's a year. Thing. You know what I don't really like? What? Bagpipes. I don't think anyone really <laughs> likes really bagpipes. It's a fun instrument. You want to go and you're like, oh, thank the Lord. And here's the worst thing. If, if someone's really not good at bagpipes, <laughs> or it's St. Patrick's Day at midnight, you know what they started doing at 6 a.m.? Getting drunk. Yeah. And they've been playing bagpipes for 40s. They're out of breath. Yeah. They're there, redder than this goddamn cut like, yeah. And so it turns into like just a jumble of nonsense. We have a piper down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the pipers are down. But at McDonough's, they come in there 17 times a day. Yeah. And every time I would be there, they come in and be like, cigarette time. Yeah. And here's the thing. So what you hear, when you, they're not tuning their bagpipes. What you're hearing is them trying to lip fill the bag with air first. So it's like, <laughs> it's just this drone of a terrible noise so then once you get it filled then you're constantly blowing air into it and squeezing it blowing air and squeezing into it do that all day yeah. it's like blowing it's like blowing up an yeah. air mattress with your mouth on, i'm not hanging on those gentlemen and their no no i'm not i just don't like bagpipes. i don't like the, the sound of their instrument i don't no. like the sound no. of their uh inflated pig's stomach with yeah bamboo sticking and they're just um, and so mcdonald's but mcdonald's i mean they, they, they serve breakfast at 6 a.m., yeah. 5 a.m. maybe? Yeah. And they're open 6 a.m. to 3 a.m. Yeah. It's a whole ass thing. Because Winky works there. Alex now did this year. I yeah. mean, I, Joseph asked me like seven times to do it. I'm like, no. Yeah. I don't want this. No. I, like, I, I bartended. No know, amount of money is worth it. I've that. never bartended. I've only bartended once in Patrick's Day. Because I don't know how to bartend according to my new job. Um, I just lied. So I did because they want people to do it. I don't want to do it. Because yeah. I don't know how to make drinks. Like, what's an old-fashioned? I'm like, I'm like bullshit. It's got Act lemon, like right? <laughs> um, and so, is that can or dress? So when I worked at Roos Chris, though, the first year we were open, there was a courtyard right there, and they decided, hey, we should we should have serve drinks. I'm like, I'll champion this, and I, I didn't bartend there; I was a waiter. But I was like, I'll, 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 I'll bartend right here, and it actually would have been incredibly lucrative if the chef at the time hadn't gone. When I went to the bathroom, he took the money and went to go count it. Not with us, with him and his friend who worked with us. His friend only worked about six of the twenty hours or, or twelve hours I worked, and like. The two of them went to count the money that me and my then at the time girlfriend had earned, and mostly most of, and d came back and were like, "All right, here you go. Here's 140 bucks for you, and 140 bucks for her." And I was like, "This is like a down payment on this." And I'm like, "That's what we. That's what everybody made. It's an equal split." I'm like, first off, I'm equal. I've been here all day. I did. I made Bloody Mary mix last night at my house. Like this, I, I put more time in this. Two, you're telling me we've been over 12 hours and made 140 bucks. He was like, "That's what it is." And I was like, "All right, cool." But but bag went inside the cart full of liquor we had and just loaded up. I stole like four bottles of Jaeger, four bottles of Tito's. Fuck yeah. Like, this is mine. This is mine. Like, do you, you owe me something, and if I get fired for this, I'm getting this. Yeah, yeah. Because no. th this guy just stole our money. He went downstairs and counted the money and just took a bunch of it. We were talking about, like, uh, you know, how, how you count. Like, at where, where I work, we, we don't have to worry about each other like that, and that's unfortunate. Because that, we'll send people, like, you know, Amanda will send me to count the money. Or I'll, I've counted money there. That's what I'm saying. We don't. We don't screw each other over like that. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're family. We don't screw each other over. Yeah. Well. But yeah. But that's what St. Patrick's Day does to people. What it also does is, and I'm still, I'm going to figure out who the fuck you are, okay? Saturday and Sunday, I was getting crop dusted. <laughs> I, if it had been, I wasn't there Sunday. <laughs> you're right. You weren't. I was thought but, it was. But I was farting. <laughs> but every, every time I looked, I would, I would be like, who are It would be different people around. And it happened on Sunday again. The maybe, only, maybe it was a conspiracy. A crop, a crop yeah, conspiracy. A crop crop conspiracy. circles. <laughs> uh, the only person that was there both nights was Joe T. We'll, we're going to find out. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Uh, oh, no, week. no. We're going to do the F count. Because I've made a conscious effort to keep count. I've been fucking... <laughs> I've said it three times. Uh, Kelly, I think, got maybe got one on that story. Anyway. But you said it so much. I have PTSD. I have no idea what it was. <laughs> You, 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 10, 12. Uh, I'm done caring about the caring, caring about the F count. Uh, we would like you guys to care enough to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, it's free. It's the red button. It's from behind the barcast. Uh, you can send us an email at from behind the barcast at gmail.com. You can send us a voice message if it's under a minute long, or if or, you need to spread or, it or, out. Or leave multiple voice messages. Or if you know how to, rec you got to record a voice message on your phone, you can email us the file. Yeah. And then it's just one file. If you don't know how to do that, ask Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs>
<laughs> and uh, yeah, and ask let, Fro. Ask Jeff Fro. Find him. Ask him. He let, let us know where you listen, and uh, let us know if you have any topics for us. Also, if you want to send us any fun boozes to drink, we have a PO box. It's PO Box One Nine One, Tybee Island, Georgia, three one three two eight. We love you guys. Happy Saint Fucking Patrick's Day. I'm glad it's over. We'll see you on the next week.